Welcome back to my channel, my name is Adam and today we have the Maserati Ghibli. We are on Chevy Chase Drive which is a very cool road not a lot of people know about. It's about 10 minutes east of downtown Los Angeles and if you take it all the way over the canyon it lands you pretty much in the Rose Bowl parking lot in Pasadena. Today my goal is not to tell you an in-depth review of this car but I will give you a comprehensive breakdown and tell you why I believe you've been lied to by everyone who does review this car and they trash it. They tell you to get the BMW 550 instead. I'm here to disagree with them. We're going to go over the right ways to get this car and the wrong ways because there are right and wrong ways. I'm super excited about this one. Let's get right into it. We're gonna grab the bulls by the horn and start with everything people hate about this car. First, let's start with the engine. It is a twin turbo V6. It only makes about 345 horsepower. This is the S model, so you get the better exhaust, a little bit more handling aids. Uh, the zero to 60 is a weak 5.5 seconds. So compared to the BMW 550, even the E-Class Mercedes, the Audi A6, this will be the slowest of the bunch. Absolutely no argument there. Second major complaint. After the Fiat Chrysler Group purchased the Maserati brand, everyone says that the quality has suffered. Indeed it has. I'm looking at the start button here, I'm looking at the light switches, I'm looking at the door panel. All of this is directly straight out of a Dodge Dart, a Dodge Charger, Chrysler minivans. It's not pleasant to see, but okay, this is the reality. Let's talk drivability. Okay, it's not the fastest car and you don't feel the power, it has no launch control, it doesn't feel very fast, maybe around like 40-50 miles per hour at the top of second gear, you feel a little bit of the torque kick in, so that's good. The handling, it, it, I, I feel the body roll, I definitely do, you can tell it's a heavier car, but it's not terrible, I, I'm not going to sit here and complain about the car, you know, it does it does okay you definitely feel yourself sliding through it a little bit it is an all-wheel drive that pushes most of its power to the back uh, but once you feel that you're in the corner and you feel planted that's because the all-wheel drive system is kicking in another main point people make is the options that come standard in this car or the lack thereof uh, the BMW does come with automatic braking if you're not paying attention it has the night vision cameras it has lane departure warning okay none of those are standard features in this car but that is one of the points I was going to make those are all options in this car you can have all those things okay Maserati has basically made this car more accessible to us they've said okay you can do a la carte if you don't care about those things we have an option for you you can have an affordable Maserati if you really want those things sure pay a little bit more and you get them I don't see anything wrong with that dive into the reasons why I believe you should get this over the 550. Okay, the overall summary is, I'm going to make a point that if you're going to act like the Maserati brand name does not hold weight, you're lying to yourself. It absolutely does and it does matter because Maserati listened to its consumers and Maserati said, okay, the Quattroporte, do you know at its time when it came out, the 2005 Quattroporte was worth $130,000 in today's money? Look at what they've done. They've offered now a $70,000, $80,000 replacement for it basically. I'll tell you something interesting. I went to school for car design. I graduated back in 2012. In 2011, I had a class called product planning where you look into a certain brand of your choice and you decide where in the market that car can fit a new type of vehicle that will profit. I looked directly at the Quattroporte at that time, why it was failing. I looked at the price, I looked at its competitors and my conclusion was they needed to make a smaller, more affordable car, a sedan, an entry-level Maserati to replace the Quattroporte. That was back in 2011. 
After doing all that research, I figured I was onto something and in 2013, at the end, Maserati announced the Ghibli. They saw the same thing that I saw. I'm not taking credit for anything. I'm not trying to brag that I can do market research. What I'm saying is, it was an obvious gap. Maserati listened to its consumers, it really saw why the sales were failing, and it decided to capitalize on it. Yes, there is still a Quattroporte Maserati available. I do not recommend getting that one. This is the one to get. This is what I believe is the true replacement as the entry-level Maserati that the average person who is making a decent living might want to look into. Think about it this way. This class lands in what's considered the executive class of cars, right? These are cars that I like to say are not tremendously fast. They're not extraordinarily luxurious. They're kind of in the middle. They're good at everything. They're not great at anything, okay? It's a very gray kind of zone to be in. That's why the 550 BMW, the Mercedes E-Class, and the Audi A6, they don't really stand out on the road. Whereas this one actually does. You can take your average person that he's a family man, he's been working in the same company for 25 years, collecting benefits, just being miserable in a cubicle job, and you think a BMW 550 is gonna help his life? No, this will, get this car, this will improve your life. There is absolutely nothing wrong with buying a car because of the status symbol that comes with it. There is a market for that. Wear that badge proudly. Say, yes, this is my Maserati. I'm proud of it. Is it faster than your BMW? Absolutely not. Is it reliable? Hell no. Is it made of cheap materials? Yes, there's plastic all over the place. But the difference is when you and I go to a fancy restaurant on a double date, we each have our dates with us. We had a wonderful time, great dinner. When we walk out to the valet, what you're gonna do is you're gonna walk up to the valet and you're gonna say, sir, can you get me my BMW? Uh, no, it's not that one. Uh, no, that one's green. Mine is an emerald blue metallic. I think I saw you park it near the pet store over there. And while you're doing all that in the rain, I'm gonna walk out and I'm gonna say, sir, that is my Maserati parked right outside. Please hand me the keys. I'm gonna give the guy a $1 tip because most of the people who buy this car don't really have money. But uh, chances are your date is coming home with me that night because she does not wanna stand there in the rain while they're looking for your BMW in a sea of BMWs. That's the power of this car. I can already hear a lot of you saying, Look, you can't just add to the price tag just because it has a Maserati badge. I'm here to disagree with you. Yes, you absolutely can and you should because if you want to look at Ferrari, that's a brand everyone loves. You probably will go out and tell everyone to get one, right? Well, in 2019, they reported that they made an average of $95,000 profit per car they sold. Okay, you'd be a major hypocrite if you told anyone to get a Ferrari. So I said at the start of the video, there's a right way and a wrong way of buying this car. The right way is to lease them. BMW cannot even match the lease offers on this car. I knew people who were paying under $600 a month for this car with a smaller, maybe a $5,000 down payment. BMW cannot even match that for the 550. And the right way to get it if you want to buy one is just wait a couple of years after they've been used. This car depreciates like nothing I've ever seen. There are so many beautiful, great shape, low mileage Maserati Ghiblis right now on Craigslist for around $30,000. It's worth less than half the price for like a three, four year old car that still smells brand new inside. The worst thing you can do is buy a brand new one. That's where you'll go absolutely wrong. You're gonna go mental when you try to sell this thing and realize you've only put 10,000 miles on it. Now, nobody's willing to pay over 35 grand for something that you paid 80,000 for. There we are pulling up to the Rose Bowl. Look at the view of this. What a beautiful stadium. And they have some UCLA Bruins trucks out here, so they're getting it ready for that. And this is where I give you my conclusion normally, but I believe I've already given you enough information to make the conclusion yourself. This is the car I would get over the BMW 550. You can say it's for shallow reasons, but to each their own. And I know there's a certain demographic that agrees with me. Thank you so much for watching this video. I have a bunch of great content coming out. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the comments, follow me on Instagram at AdamDrivesLA. And until next time, have a wonderful day.